if we are in an, a country where we are not needed because we had family here already so it was very easy for us to right. come here so when we moved um, because of the shooting that was going on and, and, and one tragic thing that was going on is that young boys were taken in as soldiers so with that going on my mom had a fear of saying what if I have a son what's going to happen to me if I stay here so that was one of the reasons why we just you know packed up and moved came to South Africa and we already had an uncle here so it was very easy for us to adapt to the whole environment so does uh, your mom and dad tell you stories about life in uh, Lubumbashi yes very much the, so very what are some much. of the stories that they've relayed to you um I remember one story is um my dad how my dad started uh, varsity right. it was very hectic for him um, he explained how he had to wake up one morning and then go in the, like the same way how uh, South Africans do it here. You guys were after matric, he'd get a holiday and yeah. then after that the results come out. So when his results came out, he was very nervous, but he passed very good. Like he did nursing, he went in, on and did nursing. Wow. So once when he started the whole nursing career and the whole nursing practice, he realized it was a different environment for him. It's something exciting to study. That's why he always, always urged me to go out and study, go out, you know, and, and find education, even if it's not directly from school. Get uh, an environment whereby I can get, like, feed myself with more knowledge, feed myself with education. So those are one of his stories. My mom always used to tell me stories of how they need to, like, travel, walk from the house to the river or the stream just to get water and then travel back. That's why whenever we open the tap and we leave the tap running, she'd be like, yay, what did I say? <laughs> See what you're doing. So and those sometimes, are, you know, sometimes we take those little things for granted. Yes, right? exactly. Because when, whenever we leave the tap open, she's like, I wish you were there in Congo to see how we had to just mm -hmm. walk and get water and you're just running the water and, and, and that would like actually, actually touch your heart and you'd be like, you know what, she's kind of right. There are people yeah. here who don't have this and then you like turn off the tap. And I'm sure you're going to tell your own kids and grandkids. Exactly, that <laughs> exactly. I wouldn't miss that part. <laughs> of course, uh, Lubumbashi, which if memory serves me correct, uh, I think it's a... Uh, it's a big mining area, right? Yes, Lots exactly. of copper mines. Lots of copper mines. It's one of our best raw material that we have in, in the DRC. So you seem to have adapted to life in South Africa exactly. very well. You've been here since uh, you were two. Uh, you mentioned you had family here. How did you get uh, introduced to the uh, Peace Players International, and in particular, Peace Players South Africa? Okay, so um, I think it was in 2009 when I was doing my grade 6. So we didn't have the sports that we had. I, didn't, I, I never used to like netball. I felt like it was too girly for me in a way. Really? I, I, very much. I'm, I'm afraid to say. Well, netball and basketball are fairly similar, isn't it? But quite. Not, not quite. No, <laughs> similar, okay. but All right, so hang on. Uh, press pause, Anisha. I'm going to ask Coach Nas, what's the major difference?